Despite the CDC declaring yesterday that every county in Massachusetts has higher substantial COVID transmission rates, Governor Charlie Baker still is not on board with any kind of widespread vaccine mandate. And in Boston, while Acting Mayor Kim Janey announced last week that city workers will need to be vaccinated by mid-October or undergo weekly testing, she's resisting the idea of requiring proof of vaccination at private establishments like the kind New York started mandating today in many indoor places. Meaning, once again, it's up to local businesses themselves here to figure out how to move forward. A challenge even more fraught in spaces meant for larger crowds. So how are concert halls, music venues, and other event spaces navigating the latest surge? And what does the science say about public gatherings at this point? Joining me are Michael Dorff. He's the founder and CEO of City Winery, restaurant and music venue, which now requires proof of vaccination or negative COVID test for entry. And Dr. Sabrina Asumo. She's assistant professor of medicine at Boston University School of Medicine and an infectious diseases attending physician at BMC Boston Medical Center. Dr. Michael, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having Michael, me. How'd you, thank you. Michael, how'd you decide on these protocols? We started doing it in New York in April, uh, probably the first restaurant and music venue in New York. Mm -hmm. It just seemed obvious. Our job in the hospitality business really is to make people feel as comfortable as possible. And that's air conditioning and lighting and safe egress and sprinkler systems, given what's going on in the world of vaccine and testing was something we needed to do, wearing masks uh, as much as possible. And we started in New York. We didn't get that much pushback. In fact, we got a lot of very, uh, I guess our audience is a little more intelligent than the average bear, but was was very appreciative of creating a safe environment. And we got used to it. Now we're, it's a little easier for us because we're used to looking for a ticket when someone comes in, asking for an ID to make sure they're over 21 mm -hmm. to drink. So, you know, we have security, we have a check. So adding this layer wasn't very difficult. It's gotten political. By the way, Go ahead. we think we're pretty smart up here in Boston, too. What's the reaction of uh, your customers? Bit? I had uh, 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 Livingston Taylor on the other night who was about to perform. Uh, what's the reaction quickly, if you can, of customers in Boston? Have they been as accepting? Yes, they're smart up there, too. Um, <laughs> I will think maybe Thank too, sometimes too smart in Boston because then there's some other cerebral issues of freedom and, and that gets a little messy, but for the most part, our, our, our Northern city winery locations have all been very accepting of our new policy. Good, Good. Dr. Uh, Asumu, uh, New York City, after Michael and others took the lead, did decide through the mayor there, uh, most indoor venues, you gotta show vaccination, you gotta show proof of vaccination. Neither the mayor of Boston nor the governor of Massachusetts thinks that's appropriate. Who's right? Which is a safer setting? What Mayor de Blasio is suggesting or what Janie and Baker are embracing here? Yeah, no, this is an interesting debate and it's been interesting to see how different localities have decided to do, um, to use different approaches. But the science is telling us, number one, that our number one solution to getting to the new normal is vaccinating as many people as possible. In the beginning, we've tried to encourage people, we've tried to give incentives, but I think we're getting to the point where really, um, trying to use some mandates in certain settings is going to be the way that we're going to get the last um, the last few people, the last the last group um, to get vaccinated. But the other thing that's really important is that we don't just want to do mandates. What we want to do is pair the mandates with access. And by access, I don't just mean making it available at CVS. I think that not sure. only making it available, but also making sure that people have the time off to get vaccinated, that if they have side effects, they know that they'll get paid leave. Um, all those measures are going to be important. And then another important thing is access to information. There has been so much misinformation. And unfortunately, I was in clinic this morning talking to patients, trying to encourage as many patients as possible. And there is still so much misinformation out there. And so we have to work to provide access to information so that we get everyone comfortable with getting vaccinated. Well, it seems to me, doctor, in addition to the public health implications and getting information, it seems to me that an incentive to get vaccinated 
is because you want to go to a venue like City Winery, or you do want to go to a restaurant in your neighborhood like Pagu in Cambridge, which says you must be vaccinated. So there's another benefit, I would argue, uh, as well. Michael, going back to you just for a second. So in New York City, I know you were ahead of where de Blasio was, but are you better as a business person to be in a setting where you're an outlier? There aren't many of you here. Club Passim, the Middle East, Jacques Cabaret, very few. Or is it better to be in New York City where everybody's operating under the same rules as you are? Well, we were doing it before others in New York, and and I know we, we had some real uh, questioning from, from investors, from managers, going like, why are we turning away some business? And we're, so there is a little bit of a loss, perhaps. I would argue that there's a greater gain because we'll get other customers who want to be in a safer bubble and would rather come with us. I would pay more to fly on uh, American Airlines today if I knew the flight was 100% vaccinated, right? So I think the same thing here, people will pay for the luxury of being in a bubble of fully vaccinated others. Michael, I'm gonna be on the same plane as you, I should say, so we'll get to meet in that uh, venue. You know, doctor, it's not just indoors like New York City is doing and City Winery and a few others are doing here in Boston, uh, in a Boston area, Greater Boston, I'm sure you've read there are a lot of discussion about outdoor venues as well. There are a number of concerts that have been canceled, big concert in Boston, in Boston, in outlying cities and towns, because performers felt that they were putting customers at risk, even though they're outside. Fenway Park urges the unvaccinated to wear masks, but there's no mandate. Should we have rules on outdoor venues as well, or is indoor enough? No, I think that, so first of all, whenever I'm asked these questions, I'd like to emphasize what is what is actually safe. So we want to emphasize to people that in general, if you have to pick between indoor and outdoors, outdoors is the way to go because of ventilation. Sure. So sure. Um, outdoors is safe, but um, if you, but however, if you're going to be outdoors in a crowd, that is when you would need to wear a mask and have, you know, additional measures. But in general, outdoors is safe. Outdoor, general outdoors, you say, is safe. I'm sorry, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not a doctor, but I think taking every precaution possible, and if you can create mandates for large gatherings outdoors, you're, again, creating an even safer environment, even though we know it's better to be outdoors. And, 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 and us in the content creation and the areas that people do come together, I do feel it's on us to 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 make this enforcement happen, even if it's not government mandated. Make the places where people are getting together in, in tight proximity, whether it's indoor or outdoor, um, on us to, to, to enforce. Michael Dorf, may many others follow your lead. Dr. Asumo, uh, thank you so much for your time. It's good to meet both of you. Uh, thanks for your work and thanks for being here. Thanks so much. Thank you.